Hello and welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we're taking a look at the new Slimline Forest Border Die and the Slimline Simple Stitched Hillside Dies. So for my first card, I've got a bunch of squirrels here from Let's Go Nuts. I'm going to use this large 12 by 12 dot paper from the Into the Woods collection and I'm using my Slimline Rectangle Die to cut that out. I've also cut that same rectangle from some cilantro and some rainforest cardstock. And I'm going to be using those to cut with my borders. And then I'm also going to have a craft card base. So I'm going to start by decorating my card base. I wanted to kind of decorate it a little more than just the plain craft. So I'm using my wood grain backdrop stamp. And I'm inking that up with dough ink for a more subtle tone on tone brown. And I'm just going to cover this whole card base in that wood grain. You're only going to see the edges of it as a border, but I just thought it added some nice detail to this card. So I'm just working my way down. So my wood grain is going to go up and down because this is going to be a landscape card. And I'm just going to completely fill it. So it took four times stamping to completely fill this slimline card, which is eight and a half by three and a half. And then I'm also going to go in with my tea dye distress ink and sort of darken it up a little bit, give it some variation in its color so it's not just all that craft color. And this just adds a little bit more interest. So now to work on cutting my borders. So this is the forest border slimline. And you can see that it matches one of our previous slimline stitch hillsides that came with the slimline rectangle dies. So you can see they're the same curve. So I'm actually going to cut my front piece first with that regular hillside. And I'm just kind of positioning it. I'm using my sentiment, it's already on a block, so I can make sure that I've got enough space for it where I want it. And then once I've got that hillside where I want it, I'm just gonna run it through my die cut machine. I'm also gonna cut a slider, so I'm just gonna cut it at the same time, and I'm checking it to make sure that I have enough space with the hillside, so you can see here, it's pretty close to the hillside at the top, so I'm just gonna adjust it a little bit. So it's good to check this before you cut it. And then I just ran it through and cut both of those at the same time. So now to do my forest border, which I'm going to cut from this darker cardstock. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up that green on top. And then since this is the same curve, I can just take it and snug it right up against the curve I've already cut from that green. And then I can just tape it in place with a little bit of washi tape and it will cut it out in the perfect placement to line up with the hill on my green piece of cardstock. So I'm just double checking it, making sure it's nice and tight and I'm just gonna add another piece of tape. And then I'll slide that green piece out from underneath it and I'll run this through my die cut machine and you can see that I have this fun border of these little trees and it matches the curve of my hillside perfectly. And then this is going to layer over top of the blue for my sky. So I'm just going to hold all these kind of in place where I want them and then I'm going to go ahead and stamp my sentiment before I glue all these pieces together. So the sentiment is also from Let's Go Nuts. And then once I have that stamped down, I'm going to start to assemble these pieces. So I'm just adding liquid glue and I'm adding a tiny dot to the back of all those little trees just to make sure they're nice and glued down so they won't get caught on anything. And I'm gonna line this up with the bottom of this pattern paper rectangle and just glue it straight to the background. Next, I'm gonna add some foam tape to the back of my green piece, and you can see that I've put my dime, I'm using a dime on this card instead of a penny, and you can see I've put it there for spacing of the slot so I know where to put my pieces of foam tape, and I actually drew a pencil line, I don't know if you can see it or not, to kind of give myself a guide 
to where I can put that foam tape and stay out of the way of that coin that's moving there. Then I'm going to put a piece of foam square on the coin here and make sure it slides in that slot. And now I'm going to put this onto the background. So what I did, which I haven't done before, which I don't know why I haven't thought of it, is I taped my coin in place on the front side. And so now I can pull off the backer of all these little pieces of foam tape and not worry about my coin moving or falling out. It's just going to stay there while I layer these two pieces together. So now I'm going to go ahead and add this whole thing to my card base that I created earlier. So I'm just going to put some strong adhesive on the back of this patterned rectangle that I have. And then I'll just layer that centered up onto the card base that I created with that wood grain. And I love the texture that that wood grain and that inking gives the frame around this little seam. So now I can pull off my piece of washi tape and you can see that my coin's gonna slide in there nicely. And now I can start adding my pieces. So this little squirrel that's running is gonna be the one that slides across my card. So he's gonna be running across the card to his friend on the other side. And then here's his little friend at the other end of the path, the yay squirrel. And I just think this one running across to his friend goes perfectly with the sentiment on this card. And now I can finish off adding my other little squirrels to the scene. I'm just adding some thin foam squares to them to pop them up just a little bit off that background. Got the one holding the acorn and the little baby squirrel and then the one sleeping which I just think is too cute. And then I colored some of the leaves and the acorns and I'm just scattering those around to sort of fill up the space a little bit more and give it a fall look. So I'm just adding a little dot of glue and then picking those little pieces up with my embellishment wand. And then here is my finished card and just how cute is that little squirrel that travels across the card to go greet his friend on the other side. I just think it's so sweet. Next up, I'm gonna create another slimline card and this one uses the simple stitch tail sides. And you can see I've already colored some of these cute little mice from the A Creature With Stirring set. I just love these mice baking goodies. It's just so cute. And this card is actually a remake of a card that Rebecca designed. So I'm going to be using the birch tree paper as my background for this one. Again, I'm cutting it out with that same stitch rectangle, that slimline rectangle. And I've also cut a piece of that pink dot paper from Let It Shine. So there are two different curves of these simple stitch hillsides. Now I'm using the flatter of the two for this particular card. And I'm going to go ahead and stamp my sentiments. I've got a wavy banner cut from some cream colored cardstock here. And I'm using my die as a placement for my sentiments. So i am got my sentiment stamp, stamp side down. And it's going to stick to this die because it's a solid die. And once I've got it curved in place, I'll just pick it up with a clear block and pull that die off. So this is... Just a simple way to curve your sentiment properly to fit in the wavy banner that you want to use. I'm going to stamp this down in some storm cloud ink, which is a dark gray ink. And then I'm also stamping the part of the sentiment that says, except in the kitchen. So it says, not a creature was stirring, except in the kitchen. I'm going to adhere this down to the bottom of my birch tree piece. So this is creating the ground for these little mice to sit on. And then I'm going to go ahead and put this whole background onto a card base that I've made also from some cream colored cardstock. And that cream color really goes well with those birch trees in this paper. They kind of have a creamy color over a white color. And now I'm going to start to assemble all my little pieces that I've already colored and cut out. I just love this little gingerbread house. I just think it's so cute. And also in that set, there's some little gingerbread cookies. There's even a little mouse, which is super cute. I'm not using that in today's card, but it is super fun that the mice have a mouse gingerbread man. 
I added some holly to that pan to decorate it. I'm going to put my little bunt cake on top of this cake stand and add a little holly to the top of that as well. And now that I have these two sort of bigger pieces assembled, I'm going to add some foam squares to them and go ahead and place them on my card. So I'm putting that pan in the middle because I'm going to have two mice holding it. One on each side. And I just want to make sure I put it in the right place so that my sentiment banner fits. So now I can add those little mice on each side holding up this cookie sheet with our gingerbread house. And then finally on the right side, I'm going to use that other little mouse in the apron. And the bowl has a die that will cut a slit for you to put stuff inside of it. So I've gone ahead and I've done that on this one so that that whisk fits inside. And I'm actually just going to hold it in place with the foam square. And then this little mouse is going to be reaching up and stirring the bowl with the whisk. And then finally, I can add the rest of my sentiment on that wavy banner that I created earlier. And then here is that finished card designed by Rebecca. It's just so cute. I love the trees in the background and I love the colors. So here is a look at both of the cards I created in today's video. And now let's take a look at some examples from the design team. Tammy created this super sweet Yeti card. I love the colors she used for her sky and she used that new snowy background stencil to create the snow. It's just so cute. Audrey created this super sweet winter scene with those bears looking up at the snowy sky. I love her use of the snowflake trio stencil in the sky and I love that white forest border. Carrie used both of the border dies I used in today's video to create this sweet little scene with these squirrels. I love how she made it look like those trees are up on a hill in the background. And then Elena used that simple stitch hillside to create this sweet snowy scene using the mountains and also the tiny Christmas dies. I just think it is so cute. Megan used the forest border cut from some black cardstock to make this cool silhouette and this spooky Halloween scene. I love those ghosts with those little houses. Thanks so much for watching. Have an amazing day. Bye.